You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. And we are back with Rodney Govins. He is a Democratic candidate for the 1st Congressional District. Good to see you. Nice to be here. Thank, Thank you for, for being here. Me. You ready for this race? I mean, come on. It's you've got about what a little over a year of oh, close to a year of nonstop eating catfish <laughs> and uh, drinking a lot of sweet tea. So uh, the beautiful thing is I'm, I'm from the South. I'm from here, right? I'm from the Southeastern Conference. So sweet tea goes without saying. That's going to be at my house anyway, Robin. Um, and I love catfish. So I You're think I'm set. ready. I think I'm built for this. Well, and the first district's got a lot of good fresh vegetables too. So you'll probably get a plate oh, yeah. full of those. Oh, and yeah. a, a lot of campaign stops. Tell people who don't know anything about you a little bit about your background. You, uh, you have served your country. Um, and you have been a big advocate in the foster care system. So tell me a little bit about what's driven you to this race and, and just some of your biography. Well, you know, I, I served in the United States Army. I joined when I was 17 years old. Um, veteran of Operation Iraqi Freedom One. I was there from 2003 to 2004. Um, really you, long what did you year. Do when you were there? Uh, communications. I was in, in the Signal Corps. So uh, whether it was satellite communications or whether it was line of sight, um, or whether it was just holding some radios and making sure that we could make some phone calls out, yeah. right? Um, just multifaceted anywhere throughout the Signal Corps. How court. old were you when you were there serving? I was 18 years old wow. uh, when we first went over there, and I was 19 when we got back. Yeah. So it was a eye-opening experience, and it really kind of led me down the pathway of empathy, right? Because, you know, as, as I saw and as I know and, and throughout my entire life, there's no winners when there's a war. Nobody wins. Um, and that kind of shaped me and I got to see a lot of the orphans during that time and me being a former foster child, it was always something that, you know, kind of tugged at my heart. So um, got involved in the foster care space, volunteering through the court appointed special advocates here in Arkansas, Grand Prairie. Shouts out Grand Prairie Casa. <laughs> um, greatest job I never got paid for. And uh, I get to represent foster kids and their best interests uh, in court and on a daily basis. Love my kids, yeah. can't quit on them. How many kids do you kind of mentor or oversee in this process? I, I used to have six cases with 18 kids. Okay. Uh, I'm down to three cases right now uh, with three kids. Yeah. So do they age out or do they, do you find homes for oh them? Oh my does goodness, that work? So. oh Roby. So, um, you know, many kids, and I don't know if people are particularly aware of the statistics, once you turn 13 years old, the chances of adoption plummet yeah. um, well below 10%. So those are the kids that they love to give me. So, you know, being a, a former teenager in foster care, I, I kind of understand the anger and can really bond with them a little bit better. Uh, and then we prepare them, you know, on the pathway of either adoption or aging out. And aging out, that's a, that's a tough one. Yeah. That's tough. So uh, something triggered with you to make you want to run for Congress. I think you ran for, um, did you run for state representative? I did, I ran for state representative okay. uh, before the redistricting House, uh, House District 44 for Cameron Cooper. Okay. Um, got absolutely mollywopped, <laughs> so, right? So, but you like the political process and you see the opportunity to affect change, I would presume. When, so. when I talk to people, there is not a Republican or Democrat issue. There is not a black and white issue. There are issues and there's a lack of representation. And there's not a single person that I've met campaigning so far that doesn't agree with the issues that we all face. Yeah. Those farmers, the foster care system, the economy, the Buffalo National River, all these issues and we don't have the proper representation talking to us, they don't come home. Yeah. So that's when I know I live here. This is my home. I'm always coming home. So might as well start representing the people you're, the right way. You're in Cabot, yes. right? So you're in the kind of the southern swing part of the district right there. Well, I guess it goes further south, go all the way down to Ch Chico South County, right, right, right. Uh, Eudora. Yep. Um, so tell me what some of the other issues are. I mean, we talked about foster care. That's obviously going to be something that happens at the state level. And there are obviously some federal opportunities there too. But beyond that, let's talk about what's what Congress does spend a lot of time focusing on defense, foreign policy. Uh, you got the farm bill is another big one right there too. What are, what are some issues that you're hearing from people that you're, the voters that you're talking to? Well, Roby, one of the biggest issues uh, comes from infrastructure. 
So w one of the best things ever uh, that I think any recent leader has done is the infrastructure bill that was passed with you know, Joe Biden's leadership because it goes into not just bridges and roads, but also broadband infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Me being in the internet service providing business for 20 years, I know a little something about internet, how important it can be and how important it is. So when you sit back and you look at the way that the process took, where you've got the federal dollars, but they're controlled kind of at the state level, right? Then you've got competing companies. Everybody wants to go and expand their network, right? But where was the focus at? Everybody wanted to go to BB and Searcy and Little Rock, right? Fayetteville. Nobody wanted to go to Eudora. Nobody wanted to go to Humnote. And I was happy to be a part of a company with Swift Connect that we went to those areas. And right now you can get faster, more reliable and better internet in Humnoke, Arkansas than you can in parts of Little Rock. And that says a lot. That's one of the biggest issues that people have because there's more Eudoras and Humnokes out there. Yeah. So we need to have a little bit of focus there. Um, you look at what's happening in Washington, D.C., particularly these last couple of months. Um, I described it in the earlier block in the show as it's been a little bit of a circus uh, in Washington, D.C. It has been that way for many, many years. I just want to preface that. Uh, is nobody rides that Bronco very smoothly, it seems. How would you be different than current leadership? How would you approach the leadership positions that are um, that, that I think have been at the center of a lot of the controversy lately. Would, would you support Hakeem Jeffries for Speaker of the House? Would you be consider crossing the aisle and doing something uh, in a bipartisan fashion? Well, so first of all, I, I, I'm never going to shy away from reaching across the aisle. When it comes to leadership, and I've had many, many leaders throughout my career, whether that was in the telecom space, Tom Warner Cable and Earthlink, or whether that was in the United States Army, Great leaders that I've always served under have always come back and listened to their people. Mm -hmm. They've come back and they've talked through things. We didn't always have to agree, but we knew that our leader cared about us. And I don't get that feeling out of, the, out of this leadership group in, in Washington right now. Okay. So I have no problem reaching across the aisle and working with somebody, but we got to get past this you know, same clown car, different driver mentality. I, I am sensing from your answers here that you, your criticism of Representative Rick Crawford, the incumbent that you'll be running against, is that he does not come home into the district as much as you would if you were elected. What would be your MO if you were elected to Congress? How often would you be back? What would you, how would you do things differently? Roby, there comes a time when you've got to go to work, and then when you're done with work, just like every other Arkansan here, you go home. Work is work, and Washington is work you got to come home and part of coming home is doing your part and talking to your people. Now I had the pleasure of going to Jonesboro recently for Veterans Day Parade and me and both me and my opponent Rick Crawford we're both veterans. Uh, I served from 2003 to 2004 I believe he served from somewhere in the 80s. That's great and that's wonderful. Here's the difference. Rick Crawford participated in the parade waving his hand parading his truck down elect Rick Crawford he has every right to do so. He was scheduled to give opening comments and open up the ceremony after the parade, and he never showed up. That is indicative of the very issue that, that I like to talk about and that I like to bring up because it is the issue at hand. We don't have the proper representation. We don't have somebody who cares about real issues affecting real Arkansans and everyday people. And that's exactly what I'm bringing to the table. All right. I don't have to tell you that being a Democrat in Arkansas has been a liability the last couple of cycles. Um, you're going to be tied to President Biden and some of his policies. You mentioned infrastructure is one that you're very supportive of. But, you know, you'll get tied to the effect of Joe Biden uh, and the economy. I could make some arguments the economy is doing pretty well. I could also point to some places where it's not in about 60 seconds or so. How do you combat the separating yourself from national party leadership or do you embrace it? Oh, uh, well, so, you know, first, and let me say, I am running as a Democrat, but more importantly, I'm running as a regular individual from the first congressional district. There is no Republican Democrat. There is no black, white. There is no, no other kind of way to segregate it out. Mm -hmm. There is only people in the first congressional district, great people. You may disagree on social security spending and that's fine. But the one thing that we can all agree on is we've got some representation issues and we need to go ahead and fix those. 
So with Joe Biden, I think his leadership has been pretty great, but no leaders without criticism, and I have mine. All right. Rodney Govins, good to meet you. Thank you for being here. Thanks a lot, Rob. I'm sure we'll talk again before the uh, campaign is way over. So. Absolutely. All right. We're back with more right after this.